Cries of the people has risen to me in heaven. That's heavy. And I've seen how harshly the Egyptians abuse and oppress them. Now I'm sending you to Pharaoh to demand that he let my people go. And here is God calling Moses to bring salvation and freedom. And, and in, in Exodus 4.19, it says that when Moses was called by God, God told him, go back to Egypt, which is where he came from, because all the men who wanted to kill you are now dead. You see, church, Jesus will send you and I back where we came from. You can reach somebody that nobody else can reach. And what, in my own life, when the Lord spoke to me and said, go back to, the, to Whittier and tell the Pharaoh of Whittier to let my people go, at that time, I had been out of this city for five years. I was living in La Puente area, and I was there with my pastor, and I, 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 there I got saved, I got set free, I got delivered, and then God called me back to Whittier. And to start this church, it was actually almost nine years serving. I was already serving God for nine years. And he said, go back to Whittier and start this church. And I, and I said, okay, God, I'll do it. But what I knew from when I left Whittier, people had put a death sentence on my life, a contract to kill me. That's my story. That's not yours. So anyway, that was my reality. So my next response when God said to go back to Whittier, my next response was, okay, God, I'll go back and die for you. I didn't know that's what you wanted. And God gave me the scripture, no, son, everyone who wanted to kill you is dead. Be and... You say, did God kill them? No, their lifestyle killed them. They lived by the sword. And if you live by the sword, you will die by the sword. And that's what happened to them. And, th and then God brought me back to this city that I was abused in. My, in this, in my, my stepfather abused me. I, I grew up down the block being abused every day by my stepfather. I grew, this, this, this city caused me much heartache and pain. And I caused much heartache and pain. But then God said, now I want you to go back to the place you came out of. Because there's people there you can reach that another minister won't be able to reach. Because you understand the pain of the people you're called to liberate. Come on, talk to me, somebody. And in the same way God has sent me back, just like he sent the demon-possessed man back to where he came from. The demon-possessed man of the Gadarenes wanted to go with the Lord. He wanted to go with the Lord and travel, and the Lord told him, you cannot go with me. You need to go back to the 10 cities that you were in, involved in, and you need to tell them what I have done for you. And that, that man's testimony opened up a region for the gospel to have revival. What are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying that you, whatever God has done in your life, God has done it, and now he's going to send you back eventually so you can tell those people that are where you were what Jesus has done in your life. Now, God didn't bring me back to Whittier right away. Why? He couldn't. Because, you know, like sometimes you tell people, hey, God's going to send you back where you come from. And next thing you know, they go back to where they come from, and they're telling all their friends about Jesus, and their friends are all blazing, and the next thing you know, they're praising, you know, they're talking about Jesus blazing because they're not ready yet. You have to let God do a work in your life, and then God will then send you back when you're ready. Come on. And you'll be a witness and a testimony of the goodness of God in your life. Come on, clap like you believe God's going to send you back. And let me say this this way. My testimony is out there. You know, I get it. It's God's miracle in my life. I'm not ashamed of it. I'm not embarrassed about it. It's my testimony. But many of you have different testimonies. Some of you were healed of cancer. 
Some of your stories are you, were, you had a miracle at birth. Some of your stories where you struggled with depression or oppression. Some of you struggled with overeating or undereating. Some of you struggled with lack and poverty. Some of you struggled with pain and suffering. Some of you struggled through divorce and loss. Whatever your struggle was, whatever the Lord saved you from, that's your story. And somebody needs to hear what God did in your life. You will reach people I can never reach, and I will reach people you can never reach. But you have to recognize you are called to be a soul winner. Shout like you're a soul winner. Some of you never even went to the world, and that's your testimony to the self-righteous. To the church goer that thinks they're going to heaven you're gonna to have to be a, a witness that just because you go to church doesn't mean you're going to heaven are you born again every one of you has a story every one of you has a testimony God has called you and I to be soul winners shout like you're a soul winner that's why the Lord says has the Lord redeemed or saved you? Then speak out. Tell others he has saved you from your enemy. Psalm 66, 16 says, come in here and I will tell you of what he has done for my soul. Number two, now more than ever, we must boldly proclaim this gospel of freedom. In 1 Corinthians 9, 16, it says, if I spread the good news, I have nothing to brag about because I have, I love this statement. Why don't you quote it with me? I have, read it, an obligation to do this. Keep reading. How horrible it will be for me if I don't spread the good news. This is Paul. Remember Paul? Paul was a very religious man. He killed Christians in the name of God. He had a crazy testimony. And he said, I'm obligated to preach the good news. Maybe your story is not like Paul's, but you have your own story. But I'm telling you, heaven declares over you and me, you are obligated to tell the good news. How horrible. Imagine if I have the answers like, like, I, I know what it's like to be abandoned or fatherless or poverty or break bondage. Maybe God healed you of sickness and you know what it's like to have to believe God for a healing and fight through that and get, get your miracle. How horrible it would be for you not to tell others that are sick how to get healed. How horrible that you believe God for your family and God did a miracle and you have that answer and you have that knowledge and you wouldn't tell somebody. How horrible would it be that you have the answer of eternal life, the good news that Jesus came to die for their sin, and we just shh, It's real, huh? Like, it's almost like an invisible wall, I notice. It's like, those are the sinners over there, and we're the church people, and there's like this wall of fear. What if I tell them and they reject me? What if I tell them and, 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 and I look stupid? And it's all about us. But once you break and I break through that flesh wall of fear and we are pride and we break it and we start sharing, it's like a river flows through you. That's where the fire of God is. Come on, somebody. If you want to stay on fire for God, keep telling your story. Don't ever be. Listen, listen. Sometimes I tell my story about my bass and people they judge me right away they like oh oh he's like that he's like that and i'm like yeah i was like that but i'm not like that but i'm never gonna let anybody corner me and make my make me feel intimidated by my testimony you see some of your testimony is not like mine but don't let anybody it's completely opposite but don't let anybody intimidate your testimony don't let anybody put you down god gave you that testimony that belongs to god and that belongs to you We got to be very careful that we don't become religious. Is Pastor John David still here? I'm going to testify about him. Okay, there he is. I'm going to testify about him. Okay. Pastor JD came to us about, I don't know, 50 years ago. Come on. He's like the first member of our church. 
I think my mom and dad were my second members. JD was my first member. And then Miguel, I think, was our fifth. <laughs> so, but JD was very, you know, he came from the world world. So when he got saved, he got on fire for God. And so he was like real, like spiritual, like, like he was real spiritual. <laughs> and JD learned something about anointing oils. <laughs> and I never taught him this. He picked it up before he got to me. He had these oils. <laughs> they were <they're> like <laughs> different fragrances, you know, fragrances. And one was like, this is a demon casting out oil. This is like freedom from sadness oil, whatever. And he was real spiritual. And then when he came to me, I taught him really how to pray, like really pray. Like we prayed a lot, like eight hours sometimes we pray. Like really, we'd get in the spirit and like, wow, come out of there like Moses. <laughs> Let my people go. Come on. And we come out of there like, remember, we were in the spirit. Like eight, you pray eight hours, you, 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 you're buzzing. You know, you know, like the Sith in Star Wars. <laughs> you know, I mean, you're powerful, man. And so we were praying, but, but I realized he's getting too spiritual, too spooky. I got I to gotta bring him to earth here because I'm supposed to disciple this guy, and he's in the spirit, like, floating around. And, you know, I'd have the game on, and he looked at me like, you're in the flesh, brother. I'm like, okay, we're going to work on you here, okay? So I said, I know, I, I know what I'm going to do. We're going to go win souls because that's how you, you, you land. And you get from way in the spirit, hallelujah, to the real deal. So I said, okay. So I got a box of 5,000 flyers. And I said, okay, we're going to have this event. We're going to have a soul winning event. So I, JD's in the prayer room. He's just in the spirit. Like he's floating about that half the ground. He's just like. <laughs> and I turned the light on and I blew his candle, turned his music. And I said, JD. He's like, huh? Like I was the devil. I go, we're going to go win some souls. We're going to, you're going to go pass out all these flyers. Get the guys. He looked at me like I was a devil. He's like, oh, how could you break my rhythm of the spirit, brother? And he even moved like that, brother, brother, you know, his oils. And, and that's what happens sometimes to the church, doesn't it? We get so in the spirit. Because, you know, the anointing's flowing. You, 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 the Bible says don't get drunk with wine, be filled with the Spirit. So you get high, you get happy in the Spirit. You're like, oh. You, you hear a good sermon like by, like by Tom or Philip or my wife or me. And you, and you hear a good sermon. You're like, whoosh. And you start like that sermon's good. You're like, I'm going to give that a seven, seven plus. It's a really powerful, like God touched me. I'm not, that was a nine, brother. I even cried three times. It was powerful. Nothing wrong with any of that, right? Even now in, in, the, in the Christian world, worship is becoming real big and everyone's packing out auditoriums to worship God and it's beautiful. But what I notice in our own church and I notice what some, sometimes that we can get so in the spirit like that and so prophetic and so deep and with our oils that we never win people to Christ. Hallelujah. Come on. How many know there's nothing wrong with being deep? You can have 37 oils. I don't care. You could pray for 20 hours. Yes, yes, and amen. But how many know that at some point has to translate into you telling somebody else that God can rescue their soul? Come on, shout like we are becoming a soul winning army. Proverbs 24, 10 and 12 says, if you faint in a crisis, you are weak. Rescue the perishing. 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 Don't hesitate to step in and help. And if you say, hey, that's none of my business, will that get you off the hook? You see, someone is watching you closely. You know someone not impressed with weak excuses. God is a savior. But without you, he can't save nobody. Angels don't save nobody. Angels cannot preach. The role of the gospel is your role. You got to preach the good news. 
and the Holy Spirit can save them. Come on, somebody. But if we're not preaching, nobody's getting saved. Acts 26, 17 through 19 in the New Living Translation said, I am sending you to open their eyes so that they may turn from darkness to light, that they may turn from the power of Satan to the power of God, that they will receive. This is powerful. Say receive. So, so, so God says, I'm sending you So they can be delivered from Satan and they can come to become children of God. But the key word is you. And if you and I do our job, then God will do his job and then they will receive forgiveness for their sins and be given an inheritance among God's people. Twofold there. When we tell them the good news and they get saved, then the second part is we teach them that they have an inheritance. And that's where the church has many times missed the mark. Because we're we've become better at giving people their inheritance, teaching them how to be healed, teaching them how to have peace of mind, teaching them how to raise their children, teaching them how to be better people teaching them how to prosper in every area. We've been good at giving them an inheritance, but what happens if we're so focused on prosperity and we miss this, then our prosperity becomes imbalanced. And you have more people concerned about how much money they make and more concerned about material things than saving the souls of men. But the number one priority of life is to seek and save that which has been lost. Somebody clap like you're a Christian. So all these people that just got saved, you know what the next step is? Get them the lifestyle of freedom. Teach them they have an inheritance. Teach them that they're blessed. Get, bring them into a place called liberty so that every struggle, every bondage, every fetter is broken. They never go back. But guess what? After a while, I'm going to say, hey, 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 freedom you receive, freedom you need to give. Shout like that's the truth today. Shout like you're ready to give freedom. And then look at this statement. Please sit down. And so King Agrippa I obeyed the vision from heaven. I love the way Esther's uncle told her. He said, "If you," re-, he, said, he said, "Esther, you need to step up to the plate." And, she's, and he said, "If you remain completely silent at this time, relief and deliverance will arise from another place." I don't want God to have to like. I don't want God to say, "Oh, I wanted to release a revival of freedom on you, but you wouldn't. You wouldn't open up your mouth. You, you, you didn't like to be persecuted. You didn't like to be talked about." You see, once you do a night of terror play. A lot of people love you, but a lot of people hate you. And you got to be willing to be hated in order to win souls. I said you got to be willing to be persecuted if you're going to be a soul winning church. You have to be. People are going to judge you, misunderstand you, but it doesn't matter. As long as God is happy, we will always and forever be blessed. Shout like we are a soul winning army. If you remain completely silent at this time, relief and deliverance will arise from another place. Say this out loud. Lord, you don't have to look no further. We will not be silent. We will testify of the goodness of God. How many, how many know we don't want God to pass us by? The devil is a liar. He said you and your father's house will perish. And I love this. Yet who knows? Whether you've come into the kingdom for such a time as this. And I close with point number three. You getting anything out of this? Yes. All right, let's land. What's at stake? Write this down. Eternity in heaven or eternity in hell? Now look at me. I'm, it doesn't bother me anymore. When we first started doing Night of Terror, I mean, people came and attacked us, like, everywhere. And I struggled with it for years. 
Like, man, you know, no one likes to be attacked, talked about. But one, four years ago, when my sister walked through that maze, she was home. Tomorrow, are you here? She's, she's, she's over in the kids' side. Four years ago, she she written a letter that that was going to be the end of her life. And she got all the pills that she needed to kill herself. She got the alcohol, and then she, was, she just started taking the pills, drinking, and she was just going to take and then overdose and end it. That night, four years ago, the Holy Spirit spoke to my mom and said, you go get her. You drag her out of that house if you have to. I know moms have a little level of authority. <laughs> and she did. In a way, she took her out. She cleaned her up. She dressed her up. She said, let's go. She was still, you know, a little bit out of it. My sister hates scary mazes and stuff like that. She don't like that stuff. But my mom said, let's go. She went through, and she, she didn't like it. And then she said, when I got to the suicide scene, glory to God. 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 She did that scene. She said she froze. She froze. Then she went to the next scene, and then she went to the hell scene, and the Holy Spirit spoke to her and said, tonight, you would have went to hell, just like that. And then I preached the word that night. She came forward. She squeezed me. She actually hurt me a little. And she said, brother, I don't want to go to hell. I said, you don't have to, Jamar. And right there, she gave her life to the Lord. Four years ago. I'm ever going to stop. You should have killed me when you had me, devil. Come on and shout like we're going to save. And I'm here, beautiful audience. And I look to my left and there's Nisha. And Tamar reached Nisha. Nisha's a small group leader now. Tamar ran the suicide room. Two years now running. It's one of our most powerful scenes. I don't care what anybody says. We're preaching the gospel. And I don't want to be a pastor of a church that doesn't love souls. I don't, come on somebody, I don't want to pastor a people that don't love souls. We're not going to be religious. We're not going to play stupid political games. We're not going to play religious games. We're people on assignment. We have a word from God. We have an anointing from heaven. And we got a message for Pharaoh. Let my people give God a shout of praise. Stand on your feet. I love that song, huh? If you got pain, man, if you feel lost, oh. why you cry, Pastor? Because I, I feel it. I feel the burden like the first day I got saved. I never want to lose that baby. I never want to lose that burden for souls. How many never want to lose that burden? Why don't you lift your hands and say, God, break my heart again for souls. Break my heart again. your hands together and give God praise. I... If you feel lost, He's a way maker. Don't you remember?
remember what that was like to be lost? You were lost. You were looking for love in all the wrong places. You had no hope. You were without God. And one day, He rescued you. Somebody just worship all over the room. You're going to get baptized today. A miracle is going to happen in that water. I'll wipe away every tear from your eyes. There'll be no more death. Talk about heaven. No more mourning. We say no more depression, no more sadness, no more sickness, no more suffering, no more crying, no more pain. I mean, no heaven is real. For the order of things has passed away, the old is gone. Then it goes on to verse 8 in Revelation 21. It says, but the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexually immoral, those who practice magic and witchcraft, the idolaters, magic arts and witchcraft, the idolaters, and all liars, they will be consigned and assigned to the fiery lake burning of sulfur what are you going to do with that scripture oh don't preach that pastor don't preach that no, no, no. You, you think just a little prayer is going to get people to heaven you better believe it because a little prayer is faith and faith gets the Holy Spirit in your heart it, you're ignorant what you are come on somebody come on somebody yeah prayer is going to get you to heaven because prayer is faith and faith allows you to take the Holy Spirit I know why God called me. Cause I'm crazy. I've been shot at, stabbed at, thrown in prison for the devil. You don't think I'm gonna take it for God? You lost your mind, son. I'm looking for some soldiers, man. I'm looking for some warriors up in here that you're not ashamed of the gospel. You're not ashamed of the gospel. Come on, is there anybody here not ashamed of the gospel? For the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. not God's will anybody go to hell but the Bible's clear Jesus preached on hell 67 times more on hell than heaven but yet when it comes to hell we're silent as a church why because once you talk about hell people start coming against you who do you think you are telling people they're going to go to hell who do you think you're talking about people are going to hell I ain't going to hell I, I I'm not telling what you what I think this is what God says in the book the book said it if you don't like the book I can't help you in today's society where there's no there's no lines of distinction this gray area there's no this is black this is white. everything's gray everything goes when you preach a distinct gospel heaven hell Jesus devil people don't like it because now they're faced with reality you have to make a choice are you on God's side or are you on Satan's side I'm preaching I'm talking to somebody I'm breaking something in the spirit if Jesus preached today most Christians would hate him that means for 67 sermons there's only 52 weeks of the year 67 of those he was preaching on hell stop that already stop talking about but you, you have to understand Jesus has been to hell he sees 
it right now. Oh, Rabba. He talked about a parable. He said there was a story, and this is not fantasy. This has happened. There was a man named Lazarus, and he was a beggar. He was a poor man. And then there was a rich man who lived sumptuously every day, he says. And the beggar would come to the rich man and say, could you give me a little piece of food? And the rich man would snub at him. You're a failure. You should have helped yourself. Get away from me. And then they both die. And the and Lazarus went to Abraham's bosom, which is no longer there. That's called purgatory. Jesus emptied purgatory when he come up out of hell. Come on. That's why Paul said, there's no more ghosts. Those are demons. There's no middle ground. You either go up when you die or you, come on. These are black and white theology of God. And the rich man ended up in hell. And he told Jesus, Jesus, Go tell my brothers so they don't end up here with me in this torment. He said, just, just give me a, a, little, a little drop of water for my tongue because I'm in this torment. And the crazy part about this story is that man is still there and he'll be there forever. Who wants to talk about that? Nobody wants to believe that's real. Nobody wants to, burp. who wants to preach that? Welcome to church. You're, you may go to hell. Like nobody, but it's true anyway. And you and I have to have the courage and the boldness in love to tell the truth to the people. To just tell the God honest gospel truth. If you are not born again, you will go straight to a devil's hell. But it's not God's will that any man perish. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That means everybody's going to end up in hell outside of Jesus. Oh, what about Buddha? What about Muhammad? What about, I'm just telling you what the Bible teaches. This is what the scripture says. Well, that's narrow-minded. Well, Jesus said the way is narrow. You see how our culture tries to fight the gospel? They don't just come against you. Oh, you're a Christian. They're too, the devil's too smart. So he tries to defragment these kind of teachings to make it seem like you're irrelevant. You're hellfire and brimstone. But the devil, the liar, when you preach the word, It'll set the captive free. Well, I don't want to serve no God that's going to send people to hell. What kind of God is that? See, you got to be smarter than that freedom. You want to talk about God sending people to hell? What about God sending his only son? to be murdered because the wages of sin is death somebody's gonna have to pay the price for sin none of us were good enough so God said I'm gonna send my son to die my mijo my baby my boy I can have my Josh my Noah imagine me giving them up to be murdered for people who don't even want them think about it and we want to put God down We're like I don't want to serve a God that sends people to hell what he sent his son to be murdered. And not only that, when he died, where did he go? He went straight to hell. So you would never have to go there. And, and you want to put God down? You want to, I don't want to serve no God that sends me. And it's, come on, if you reject God's only way to heaven, you don't put that on God, baby. That's on your pride.
I don't even know, man. I'm fired up. The master said to the servant, He basically said, go into the city and compel them to come that my house will be full. And that's exactly what I'm doing, Lord. And that's exactly what our church is doing. We're constraining them. We're urging them. It says force, require, demand, put a warrant out for their arrest. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. How many in the spirit are putting a warrant out? Angels, go get my son. Angels, go get my family. Angels, go get my daughter. Angels, go get my nephew. Angels, go get my... Come on, somebody. So are we going to be persecuted? Yeah. Are people going to hate on us for this? Yeah. You know who's probably going to come against us the most? It's not sinners. Sinners are smarter sometimes than the church. Sinners are like, man, that was awesome. I just gave my life to God. And the church, well, you know. The it's like, oh, my God, help us, Lord. But you know what? That's part of the price we're going to have to pay if we're going to be a soul-winning army. We're going to have to be talked about sometimes. Oh, you go to that church. Oh, you go to that church. Yeah, I go to that church. Yeah, we went souls in that church. Yeah, we set captives free in that church. Yeah, we cast out demons in that church. Yeah, we preach prosperity in that church. Yeah, we believe God in that church. Somebody ought to shout like we don't mind it because we're going to get a hundredfold. And this is what I, this is what I live by right here. Second Corinthians 5.10. This is what I live by. We must all appear. All of us. We will appear before the judgment seat of Christ. And each one of us are going to receive the things that we did in our bodies according to what we've done, whether good or bad. Then verse 11 says, so therefore knowing this terror, that's terror, that's, terror, that's fearful. Not, not, not like fearful of the devil, but that's, 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 that's a big day. That's terror. You think, oh man, the devil, that scary. No, no, you, you ain't seen scary until God talks. When God talks, see, when the devil talks, people go, oh. When God talks, the mountain shakes. Oh. Oh. One flick of his pinky will move everything on the planet. All he has to see and say, all he has to do, let there be light, let there be water. They talk about God. And one day we're going to stand before him. And he says, therefore, knowing the terror of the Lord, you and I need to persuade men. One day, I'm going to stand before him. My beautiful wife won't be there. My son, my daughter, Joshy Joy, no, won't be there. My mom, my dad will not be there. I'll be by myself. My heart laid open, no excuses. No, like in, how we do here to each other, we, we duck and dive and we, we, we're good with our words and we can do all that. None of that. None of that. None of that. That's, that's all over. I don't care how slick Willie you are. That's over. There's no slick. You're open. You're bare. Almighty God. And then he says, Jason, what did you do with my son? Oh, well, I wanted to win souls. I, wanted, I, I had these dreams of night of terror, but the people talked about me. So I stopped. Really? I wanted to tell more people, but I got caught up in life, and, you know, I got this and that. And Sorry. Really? I wanted to lead your people to become soldiers and disciple makers, but they fought me, so I just gave in to them. Really? Ain't gonna happen. I don't care if every one of you leave me, I'm gonna keep preaching this way. Because one day I gotta, one day I gotta stand before God. And one day you're gonna stand before God, and he's gonna say, what did you do with my son? What did you do with the cross? What did you do with this death? And what are you going to say? Well, I lived my life. I did my thing. No, you want to say I served you. I was part of the army. I'm a soul winner. Lift your hand. I feel it. If you got pain. You got pain. I want you to declare this right now. And if you need freedom. If you need freedom. You see, 
I'm going to go before God. And he's not going to say, how many people did you get saved? What did you do for me? So I can say, well, I did this. Can I get to heaven? No, because I'm getting into heaven not because of what I've done. I'm getting into heaven because of the blood of Jesus. So that's a done deal. No, this is the judgment seat of Christ. This is what you did with your life. I want to be able to say, God, I got to heaven because of you, but this is what I did because of you. I brought Sarah to you. I brought Sally, and Sally brought Miguel, and Miguel brought Nita, and Nita brought Michael, and Michael brought that, and that, and all these people are here because I obeyed. How many want the heavens full because you obeyed? I believe your house will be saved. Your family will be saved. Somebody give God praise. And I, 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 Jude 123 but others save with fear pulling them out of the fire wait a minute I thought God is a savior he told you to save them <laughs> you see we're religion you don't save anybody well, hold on let me read the Bible but others Save with fear, pulling them out of the fire. Religion, you don't save anybody. Who do you think? You see how the devil works? We know we don't save nobody. You think we're stupid? But if we don't save people and we don't pull them out, who's going to do it? Ask your neighbor, then who's going to do it? The devil ain't going to do it. The world ain't going to do it. Tell your neighbor, you know neighbor, are you born again? Then you are the body of Christ. You are the, you are. You are, you are, you are the temple of God. And pull them, pull them. Come on, somebody clap like we're going to pull them.